Hey, what's going on guys? It's Rob from Mad Jack 3D Prints. I hope you like the dramatic intro. Uh, I just happen to have a high-speed camera, so I figured I'd use it. But for those of you that don't know, I've been 3D modeling and animating for over a decade. I've also been 3D printing for over two and a half years. On today's agenda, I'm going to show you how I downloaded a Mad Max mask, the muzzle from Fury Road on Thingiverse.com and made it really kick ass in ZBrush. So let's get right to it. Let's go. So this is where I downloaded the original model from Carry the What on Thingiverse. As you can see, it's a nice clean model, but it's fairly low resolution. I wanted to download that just because I didn't want to spend time modeling it from scratch. And then a little bit of research, I saw SyncHacks.com. It looks like they're one and the same here, so you can go check those guys out. So once I added my details and my, my scarring and my wear and tear, um, I uploaded this to Thingiverse. So you can download my version of the model on Thingiverse as well. If you like the models on there, go ahead and follow me because that one follower is looking pretty skimpy right there. <laughs> but uh, it is available for free download on Thingiverse if you want to print your own. Okay, so now we're in Pixelogic's ZBrush where I brought in the uh, bottom portion of the mask. They're two separate pieces so that you can print it easily. I'm just using a drag rectangle brush with a custom texture that I made. And here I am masking off the bottom portion of the mask to make sure that that stays flat and smooth because that's going to be the, the first layer we're going to 3D print. Uh, the rest is going to be support material. So this is fairly low resolution. I've divided it a few times in ZBrush. Just so when I'm adding the details here, the scratches from the alpha brush, uh, it, it picks everything up. So this is a real high res model at this point. So I'm just rotating and moving the, the mask around to make sure I have the scratches the way I like them. There are a bit of seams, so I do end up going over layers a few different times just to make sure the seams aren't seen. I switch over the alpha brush and get something to really make it look like it's gouged up, like this thing's been beat up for a little while. I just worn it and uh, just got some battle damage. But that's basically it. I'll go in there, I'll smooth some parts like on the bolts, I'll smooth up some of the backing on it. And right now I'm just playing around with the, the move tool. I'll change the shape a little bit. Uh, it seemed like the top portion of the mask was a little too high and it was covering the people's eyes. So I just moved it down just a titch. But we're bringing the model into Cura for 3D printing. Now the first thing I do is I'm gonna just look it over. This model does need plenty of supports. I'm gonna take a look at the overhang. So every section in red, that's basically where the printer is gonna have problems printing without support. So we're gonna add support everywhere. I'm gonna print this out as fast as possible just so I can get a rough draft. Um, I'm gonna print it out at 0.2 layer height and seven fill density with the average uh, print speed of 50. If I want this real high resolution, I'd print it at 0.06 or 0.1, but this is already gonna be about a 20 hour print with the support material. So if I bump that to 0.1 or bring it down to a 0.1, that's basically going to double the print time. And I don't feel like waiting 40 hours for this print here just to see how it's going to look. Right now I'm going to the layer view, which is basically going to show you where the printer is going to lay down the lines and print out the material. Um, the red and yellow section is the base model. The light blue lines is the support material that you're going to break away once it's finished printing. 
So you can look here and it basically runs through exactly where the printer is going to lay down lines, each, each path for each layer. So here we have the 3D print. You can see there's a ton of support material. It came off pretty easy. I just had to file a little bit of it down once I finished it up here. This is the final mask. I added some spray paint, um, bungee cords riveted to it, so that it actually attached to my head. And in a second, here's my Halloween costume. But anyway, this is my 3D printed mask. Came out pretty nice. Got my little knife here. For some reason, Amazon won't sell me a toy gun for some kind of New York State reason, but I uh, just wanted to show this off before I go out for the night. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. If you like this video, please subscribe and like. And you can also download my model on Thingiverse.com. I'm under Magic 3D Prints. And if you want to download my Darth Vader Melted Mask model, that's available on my website, MadJack3DPrints.com. All right, I'll talk to you soon. And this, folks, is the concerned face of a man with an out-of-control fire in his lap. <laughs>